Hello my friends, and welcome back to yet another episode of Wrenching on the EF. If you guys are new to the channel, this is my cheap, very cheap EFXR6, which I bought for $3,000 off Facebook Marketplace. And this is my head. So no head? Well, this head that I removed in the last video. And if you haven't seen that video, please go check it out because it'll make a whole lot more sense as to why the head is here and not on the engine. <laughs> <laughs> Today's job is to disassemble this to just the bare head. Let us begin. Before I start ripping into the head, I'm going to show you guys what the bottom end looks like because I'm sure you guys would be will be interested in seeing the condition of the bores and the pistons and stuff. This is what the pistons look like. They don't really look that bad. A little bit of rusting because they have been exposed over the past few days. Not too much carbon buildup. The pistons don't look uh, like they've kissed any valves recently, which is good. The bores, they do look a little bit ovaled, meaning the rings uh, have only worn down some of the honing marks on the bores, uh, but that's all right because these engines are readily available and if this, this one does end up going, then I can find a, perhaps an AE motor or maybe another sock. But we will cross that bridge when we get to it. When you're working with a camshaft or camshafts, you want to start by working your way from out to in and slowly undoing it step by step. Fucking fly. There we go. So all bolts have been cracked. So now you can grab a power tool if you have access to one or just get someone else to do it because you can't be bothered, which is me right now. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab a power tool and do this. So I got my tool. If you guys don't have one of these, I highly, highly recommend investing in one. This is a Milwaukee one. You don't have to get a Milwaukee one, but a Zito sell them. It's a electric ratchet, which is probably the best tool I own. Rex actually calls it the best tool in the world. So if that's anything to go by, then sure. It is also imperative that you find yourself an Esky to do this job on because this is an Australian car. All right. And Australian cars deserve to be worked on on an Esky. Half it on the ground because it's not on that level. It's just above that and it Esky. Yeah. Loosen them off. are correct I should be able to just lift this off now because they're all loose um, except those two nice don't do this this is bad I'm a little bit special as you can tell anyway my calculations were incorrect but now we should be able to lift them off they're all loose yes very good all right let's give it a go lift aha there you go there's the uh, bridge I guess you could say Oh, there we go. We're off. So Ollie almost just dropped my head. So that 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 would have been uh that would have been ideal, but it is like paradise here in Melbourne and we are working on head. Oh. So it is another day in uh, beautiful Melbourne. The other day Ollie took out one of the valve springs and we'll show you how to do this. I didn't know that you could do this. I always just use valve spring tools when I do things of such nature. But Ollie, would you like to demonstrate? Would you like to hold? Yes, I can hold. Yes. Well, that was easy. Yep. So this is what you guys need to remove. So this is what holds the top of the valve spring on uh, into the sort of ridges on the on the valve. So you need to smash, literally smash the valve, uh, the valve string rather, and they just pop out. You learn something new every day. 
These are dual row valve springs. Just to demonstrate, with stock valve springs, you can usually push them in. That's all my weight, and I can barely push it in. This should hold some boost. Ow! Ow! <laughs> this is a very durable Esky, I must say. <laughs> so this Esky, shout out to this brand, because what brand is it? It's Igloo. <laughs> Igloo. Shout out to these guys. Make a great workbench, eh? What the hell just happened? The valve spring fly out. Did you get that? <laughs> I think so. It went under the car. <laughs> That's not where you belong. Something I just discovered about my sock. Socks have a tendency of um, flipping their valves upside down, as you can see. So it, it, it's pretty rare, but it does happen. So if this does happen, you simply just, just take the valve out. <laughs> This is the exhaust side, as you can see, because you have the exhaust ports here. And there's six of them, one for each valve. We come over here, all right? And it's very simple because there's not two valves per cylinder, it's only one because you only need one. Look at, look at the size of it. It looks that bent. Me of the size of something else. There we go. Number one valve, very simple. This is how heads sit in the engine. <laughs> Vertical. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so that's not ideal. Oh, kind of like a Subaru. Yep. Yeah, this is exactly like a Subaru. <laughs> nice. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, this is a factory ticketed head, as you can see, with the big T. I've never actually seen a normal one, but these apparently are factory ported from factory. In the factory, they port them so that they're bigger from factory. Another fact about socks compared to Intex is that socks have bigger valves and they're stronger as well. But for some reason they still don't flow as well as an Intex. Intex the world, baby! Yep. Here's another one. Mm, thank you. Mm. <sighs> yes, that's definitely a sock valve. Spicy. <laughs> oh no. I dropped my plugs. Move, bro. Cheers. So, one thing I forgot to do is remove the head gasket. And hopefully, it comes off in one piece because these use a composite head gasket. Uh, this isn't stock, actually. It's some. Brand I've never heard of Mono Talk. So let's try lift it. Oh, that was easy. That was easy. Was it easy? It was easy. So here you go. Composite head gasket. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking squashed it, bro. <laughs> How many times have we tripped over that? <laughs> Ready for a GI Yaris three cylinder? <laughs> Dude, you just hit some poor lady with a pram. <laughs> <laughs> Attach it onto the exhaust. Nice! Dude, your head gasket, you've blown your head gasket, man. Yeah, it's come out of the exhaust, man. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you replaced your head gasket, did you? Yep. off the EF. I'm gonna let the head shop take the valve stem seals out because I've tried to take them out. I'm not entirely sure if it's the, just the rubber that comes off or if it's like this gold sleeve that comes off. I've tried to take it off with pliers. I'm, I'm not gonna bother. Like it, it's such a small thing that they can just remove. For some reason, they're not budging. So I'm just gonna leave them in. You guys can roast me in the comments for being a noob. I don't care. They're staying in. Anyway, I'll be dropping the head off very shortly. Hopefully in the next video, I'll be taking the timing cover off, resealing it, resealing the sump, and possibly even tapping a turbo drain into the sump to prepare it to obviously function in the future. 
but I don't want to be taking the sump off again because apparently they're a bit of a pain in the ass to do on these engines. I will be pulling the timing cover off, like I said, and cleaning up the block to prepare it for the refreshed head to go back on. But anyway, until then, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Hope you guys are enjoying the EF content and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.